Hey guys, in an effort to stay a little bit more consistent with my videos, um, I'm going to throw one out there today that covers a little bit about what I did over this last winter. Uh, I get asked a lot uh, what farmers do and what I end up doing in the winter. And my answer is always that I can't really say exactly what it is I do in the winter, but it seems like I always stay plenty busy. Uh, I end up doing a lot of different things. And I will say that we don't have any livestock. Uh, Dad sold the hogs and cattle when I was pretty young. So I've never had to take care of livestock as an adult. And uh, I know those guys uh, obviously stay really busy with their animals. That takes a lot of time. So this is kind of just a, a collection of uh, clips that I took throughout the winter. I wasn't sure if I'd ever use them or not. But uh, some stuff that maybe you guys will find interesting, maybe not. Uh, go ahead and comment. Let me know if you liked it or not. Um, if it was interesting to you, maybe it will be, maybe it won't. Um, and I left out some of the obvious things like um, working in the shop as far as maintenance and repair. Obviously, we spend a lot of time working in our shop and keeping the equipment up uh, and making sure that it's going to be ready for, for the next growing season. Um, and one of the big things we do a lot of the winters is, is haul grain. Uh, so we store corn and soybeans in our grain bins and we end up hauling a lot of that out throughout the winter. Um, this winter, we weren't real busy with that because the local prices aren't so great. So uh, we still have a lot of grain on hand. We did haul a little bit, but uh, definitely a lot less uh, than what we've hauled in the past few years. We usually stay pretty busy with that, and that just wasn't the case this winter. So hopefully uh, prices will improve a little bit and we'll be able to haul a bunch more of that out um, pretty soon here. But uh, anyway, in the meantime, uh, see what you think here. This will maybe give you a little bit of an idea of what I was up to. Let me know what you think. Well, I'm on my way down to Minneapolis to the convention center. Uh, there's a, a uh, short course, they call it. The University of Minnesota is putting on a short course for uh, different egg retailers and co-ops and different businesses. Uh, and I'm actually going to be serving on a millennial farmer panel at about 10.30 or 11 o'clock and um, we're going to be asked, asked questions about uh, what we look for from businesses and from retailers as far as uh, terms of service and understanding and different uh, ag knowledge that we'd like them to have. So I'm kind of excited. It's the first time I've done anything like this and we'll see how it goes. Unfortunately, some days we got to spend a lot of time doing some accounting. Sometimes we get a snowstorm and we got to clean up after that. Once in a while, it's important that we spend some time with the finer things in life, like race cars. Well, it's early morning. It's one degree below zero Fahrenheit, and it's windy, and it's humid. It's about a 25 below wind chill out, so it's kind of a nice balmy morning. And I'm headed to our, our local Corn and Soybean Growers Association meeting where uh, we, we work with the state and the national organizations to help provide a voice in Washington for farmers. Uh, we also uh, work together to put, put together different promotions for ethanol and things like that within, within the community. Um, and we, we go into parades and different events kind of just to raise a, a local general awareness of, of agriculture and what we do. Uh, we also give out five different uh, scholarships for local kids that are going into an egg related field. So it should be a good time. That's what I'm up to this morning and it should be should be a good time. I enjoy my time that I that I spend with that board. Sometimes we take the boy to hockey practice. Today I'm headed to a nitrogen smart conference that's being put on by the Extension Office at the University of Minnesota. And the focus is on 
uh, how, how we can maximize our return on investment using nitrogen for the crops while minimizing losses. So how can we make sure that the nitrogen that we're spending money on, that we're putting into the soil, is being used by those crops in an efficient way and not uh, leaching into the groundwater or volatizing up into the air? Because we don't want that, uh, just, just like anybody else doesn't want that. Uh, that nitrogen we put in that field cost us a lot of money and we want to get a return on that. We definitely don't want it in our, our drinking water and, and our air because uh, the fact is that we're the ones that live right out here where, where we're putting that nitrogen on. And so uh, it should be interesting. We'll see what they talk about. They've got a couple of scientists is what I understand and, and we'll see uh, what the scientists from the U of M say. This afternoon, I'm headed over to the bank to sit down with the banker and go over our plans for 2017. So I've got my business plan here. We put a business plan together every year. Um, it kind of just outlines uh, what, what our plans are for the operation over the next several years and, and what our farming operation is about, which they have a lot of that information already. They pretty much know all that. That doesn't change a whole lot year to year. Um, we update some of our goals and, and things like that. Um, what else I've got in there is uh, my balance sheet, uh, a financial analysis from uh, how we did in 2016, and an estimated 2017 cash flow. So we put the numbers together, sit down and, and put the numbers together, figure out where we're at and where we think we're going to go, and then we bring that to the banker and talk to him and try to secure uh, funding for next year's crop. So that's what I'm headed off to do this afternoon now. Okay guys, I know that some of that was pretty random and I left some of it pretty open-ended. Um, I knew it would kind of be that way. Uh, let me know if you found that interesting or not. I know I get a lot of comments on people who would like to see a video on this or a video on that and uh, I will try to get as many different types of videos as I can. It's not always easy to video different things, to get video of different things. I'm not exactly a real comfortable guy when it comes to just taking my phone out and and getting a video of any random thing when I'm when we're working around with people so it gets a little awkward in situations sometimes but um, I hope you guys are enjoying it and learning some things um, I see we're up to uh, like 4,500 uh, subscribers so I appreciate that um, I encourage you to subscribe and follow me on Instagram and Facebook as well and thank you for watching